So we just talked about what is going to be involved for setting up a high availability cluster to make sure a web service will be serviced by the cluster. And we ended with a shared storage. Let's talk about this shared storage a little bit more. Because how are you going to make sure that these different web servers have access to the same storage? There are a few solutions. There's DRBD, there's iSCSI, and more generically we need to talk about SAN as well. So what is involved? Well, DRBD is a distributed replicated block device. So the idea in DRBD is that every server will have a hard drive. Imagine this, a hard drive. So this hard drive is locally visible to every server and in DRBD you are going to set up block level synchronization between the different hard drives. And that means that at the moment that something is written here, block, lef block level synchronization will occur and it will be replicated here and it will be replicated here as well. We will learn that DRBD can be set up in multiple ways. The most common way to set up DRBD is in active passive. An active passive DRBD will have uh, one active server, one passive server or optionally multiple passive servers. Uh, and that works perfectly for a high availability web server. Because a high availability web server is a process that's going to be running once in the cluster. So if you have active passive DRBD, you just need to make sure that the DRBD device is active there where the high availability web server uh, is going to be running. And as it is uh, doing block level synchronization uh, at any time, that means that at the moment that the web server moves over to another server, the DRBD active needs to move over again and the web server will still have uh, read-write access to its data. There's another solution and this other solution is uh, iSCSI. Now in iSCSI what you basically do is you install an external server. We call that the iSCSI target. And this external server is servicing many hard disks and these hard disks are presented as LUNs. A LUN is like a partition that is presented by the iSCSI server. Now instead of having all the storage locally as was the case for DRBD, in iSCSI you will have a storage network and this storage network allows the servers to communicate to the iSCSI server. So on the iSCSI server you are going to create access control lists to define who has access to which LUN on the iSCSI SAN. And the result will be that uh, on your servers you will have an additional device like an SDB device for example, uh, which really is a shared storage device. iSCSI like DRBD is just taking care of representing uh, a block device. So the result of iSCSI will be that every server will see an SDB device. Now on iSCSI as well you need to choose between an active-active configuration or an active-passive configuration. And in order to do so it's very important what you are going to put on top of the iSCSI device. We will see that there's a specific version of LVM which is C LVM, clustered LVM. And by using clustered LVM you can take care of logging, locking in the iSCSI environment and make sure that either multiple nodes can write to the device simultaneously or that the LVM volume is presented to one node only. Also you should uh, consider using clustered file systems like GFS uh, or OCFS2. GFS and OCFS2 are uh, clustered file systems and uh, what makes them clustered file systems is that both of them are file systems that can be used in an active-active configuration. Now do we really need GFS and OCFS2 uh, if you are using iSCSI? Of course not. If you just want to make sure that your web server is provided as a high availability web server, the web server is going to be running on one server at the same time only, like here for instance. And if it's only running here then this is the only uh, block device that needs to be writable. So you can perfectly run it with an XFS file system on top of that. 
So at this point we have talked about uh, the ingredients that are needed to create a high availability web server. An IP address, a service and a file system. And all of them are going to be offered uh, through a resource group in the cluster. So the cluster is not going to manage just the web server process, it's going to manage the resource group and make sure it runs somewhere in the cluster. Oh, and before we end this lesson, I talked about SAN. I just want to mention it. SAN is Storage Area Network and we, when we talk about iSCSI, basically we talk about SAN as well. But for many people, when they talk about SAN, they think about fiber channel solutions, which normally are proprietary, uh, relatively high priced uh, storage solutions. It can be connected to the cluster as well. And once they are connected to the cluster, it's basically this model. So you will have an external SAN filer and locally on the nodes, uh, you will have an additional disk device. It's the same story as what we have seen with iSCSI.